hello welcome to today's episode of taboo tuesday um today we are kind of zooming back a little bit zooming out and discussing what is a taboo um and some other questions related to that today i have my friend reed with me um he is an amazing pianist and piano teacher and has like probably more instruments than you um <laughs> do you have anything to add in that introduction reed <laughs> <laughs> uh, putting an automophone, which uh, if you haven't seen what those are, they're maybe, maybe the most beautiful instrument in the world, so go look it up. Um, also, I want to just add, uh, I, I'm in Iowa, um, I teach in North Liberty, and we just had the derecho come through, which was just a windstorm that came out of nowhere. Uh, the area I'm, I'm at is fine, but for Cedar Rapids, I know they need a lot of supplies still, so... Um, if you can donate anything, we'll put a link below that you can, um, you know, donate money or uh, send goods or whatever else they need. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, please help out if you can. Um, yeah, so the, the topic of what is a taboo, um, we're just going to start out really simple with the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition and then get into more fun stuff. Um, so taboo as an adjective. The definition, it has three or two different ones. 1A, banned on the grounds of morality or taste. 1B, banned as a constituting as constituting a risk, such as there, the area beyond is taboo, still alive with explosives. And then last, forbidden to profane use or contact because of what are held to be dangerous supernatural powers. Um, that makes me think of our last, or the last episode with Sarah, where we talked about witches. Um, and then taboo as a noun is defined as a prohibited, imp a prohibition imposed by social customs or as a protective measure. 1B, something that is not acceptable to say, mention, or do, something that is taboo. 2, a prohibition against touching, saying, or doing something for fear of immediate harm from a supernatural force. Um, three belief and taboos and then lastly taboo as a verb to set apart as taboo especially by marketing by marking with a ritualistic symbol and two to avoid or ban as taboo so one interesting thing that i actually didn't see before when i originally read this is a lot of connection to the supernatural or magic um which right often makes people rather uncomfortable because uh, it's confusing and hard to understand. <laughs> and right. well, yeah, with the things that are supernatural, um, you know, they're things that we can't explain, right? Otherwise, mm -hmm. they're not supernatural anymore. Right, uh, right. So um, already we have something that, uh, if you have a taboo based on something supernatural not everyone's it might not make any sense when you figure it out later like right um, and then also thinking about like power dynamics with taboos again thinking about the episode last week with witches the reason that people were being called out as witches was because of oppression and you know go go watch that if you're interested but but all these layers of oppression and um control and power dynamics because Typically, the people in power are the ones who get to say what is and isn't taboo. Like, we just watched a video on taboos in different countries, and in some countries, you must not disrespect the king and queen, or you will get killed. And they can set that taboo because they have the power to kill you, right? Um, of course, not all taboos are that uh, enforced, so obviously by somebody in power. But typically, they do have a lot of control over um, what is and isn't taboo. So before we dive into it but a bit more, um, I wanted to, you asked me why I started the show, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, so the, the elevator pitch version <laughs> I'll give you essentially is that um, generally taboo topics require vulnerability to talk about, and generally when we're more vulnerable with each other, granted that's not always easy and not always necessary, um, it tends to create connection. Um, and I can say that talking about this stuff with you, Reed, has, again, created a connection between us. <laughs> so, um, our next question is, what are the parameters of what is and isn't a taboo? Right. Um, so, I mean, you gave all those definitions earlier. Um, and it's kind of amazing because I, I think 
depending on where I researched, it felt like like no two answers I read were the same at all, whether it was mm-hmm. like Encyclopedia Britannica or Wikipedia or like scholarly papers that um, have been written on the subject. So it's, it's kind of all over the place and it, it shows just how broad it can be. Um, I mean, one of the papers I read uh, defined it as unwritten social rules that regulate human behavior and define the in group. And it, hmm. it, it's, that's a very broad definition. And um, I mean, there, it, there has to be some degree of power and centrality. Um, and so it raised a lot of questions of, well, at what point is it not a taboo within a society? Um, for example, mm-hmm. if you have a, like a smaller village and two people out of a hundred say, oh, you can't talk about this. It's not really a taboo, right? Because most people agree, oh, of course you can talk about it. Um, but as soon as you know, it's kind of known that, oh, maybe you shouldn't be able to talk about this, then it would be a taboo against talking about it. And of course, the other part of it would be uh, a taboo against uh, acting upon, um, you know, doing something that uh, is frowned upon within that society. So uh, maybe it's okay to talk about, but you can't actually like go and, um, you know, drink the holy water or whatever it happens to be in that case. Um, right. And it, I mean, the, the go ahead. Um, I'm, <laughs> this happens to us all the time. I was just going to say like, I, I totally agree, and I was just um, pulling up another another definition. As you said, there's so many different definitions. According to, um, I really like Urban Dictionary's definition. They say a taboo is something that is viewed as forbidden by society standards, and therefore is rarely talked about openly. So generally, these are things we don't like to talk about, but as you said, sometimes it's okay to talk about it, but it's not okay to do it. And it also makes me think about the importance of having like basis, basic human laws where it's like don't murder somebody right like <laughs> that is uh it's taboo to murder somebody but that's more than taboo right it's it's like not even a taboo it's just like don't do that it's not okay <laughs> so there's there's a, a nuance there as well um and yeah. that continues saying yeah. some are less taboo than they were in the past so that's another thing we're going to talk about what how do taboos evolve and change over time um and some things are still more than ever taboo and while most have to do with sex some taboos have to do with food and other beliefs, um, and typically a taboo will bring a conversation to a dead stop. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, it depends okay. who you're talking to, right? Isn't that always? Yeah. Yeah. It might be taboo, but if you know you're talking to someone you trust, uh, you know, if you're if you're planning to murder somebody, which I think is absolutely a taboo, um, you know, it. it can be murder could be viewed as a lot of different things, but it's definitely taboo in our society. You don't go and murder people, um, and we punish people for doing that. But there are still people out there that can say, "All right, we're going to plot to murder somebody," and um, you know, you can do it within a small subset. Um, I, I think you were talking about uh, taboos changing over time too, which I find really fascinating because mm-hmm. something like gay marriage, I think, is amazing um, to. To look at um, okay, it's been a call. all right uh, something like gay marriage is a great example because if you look at what happened uh, in the United States uh, it wasn't until Obama administration in which it became legal uh, via a Supreme Court ruling which seems insane now but uh, you know it wasn't until the 2000s that things actually started really happening and um, what what attorneys will do uh, with these sorts of things is they'll try and get uh, go from court to court uh, and say, all right, Massachusetts Supreme Court, we want uh, gay marriage as a constitutional right. And and they pick places like Massachusetts because they know they're going to win. They have a liberal court or whatever. Um, And you can see similar things happening today with with the conservatives with things like abortion. But... uh, Mm -hmm. At, at what point does gay marriage go from being a taboo to not a taboo? Um, how many c- court cases or legislatures have to pass, have to say, okay, now it's okay? How much of the public has to say, all right, we approve of this, we're okay with gay marriage being a thing in the United States? And it's really hard to know exactly at what point that shifts. I mean, in the case of gay marriage, you have this United States. State Supreme Court case, that's a little cleaner than a lot of things. But like, when you talk about things like 
anal sex, it's like, at what point is that okay to talk about? And, um, you know, it, it depends on where you're at, but generally, you know, you still don't bring that up at, uh, casual conversations with people. Yeah, or like even on a first date, most people wouldn't be like, so like, what do you think about this? Uh, you know, and, and even, even in a committed relationship, sometimes like people wouldn't talk about that. So it's like, especially when it comes to sex. Um, and I think it's interesting because I've been asking a lot of people what they consider to be taboo. And, and often people say things related to sex, but as we just watched in this video with different cultural taboos, like there's, you know, so many other taboos that have nothing to do with sex at all. Um, like in Ghana, you're not supposed to give somebody a gift with your left hand, typically because in, they wipe their ass with their left hand. Yeah, um, I, I found out I've been wiping with the wrong hand. It's, uh, I never knew that. It like, it also makes me think about in, like, when you go to different countries, um, countries where a toilet is just a hole in the floor and that, um, and you're squatting, which is actually better for your body if you're squatting. That's like the whole the squatty potty, the little things. Um, yeah. And then I've, I've seen pictures in, in parks where they're telling people from this other culture that are used to, like they'll squat on a toilet seat because that, that's what they're used to in their culture. But then somehow we have to tell them not to do that because it'll mess with our toilet seats, which it's, I don't know, it's just like a weird thing that like, it's, it's just, okay. you gotta navigate that communication. Also, we have about three to four minutes left. Just putting that out there. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, or another example is like uh, you know wearing shoes in inside the home of like someone in Asia in a lot of Asian cultures. Like mm -hmm. you know you do it, and uh, there it's I mean I mean people will react very poorly to if you do it. Whereas in the United States, uh, again, not really a thing. No one really like some people care, but generally it's not like you're insulting the hosts of the people uh, that are hosting you. It's just. Um, mm -hmm oh, you should probably take your shoes off so it doesn't get muddy. It's not a taboo thing, necessarily. So, yeah, yeah it's it, crazy it, how it changes from culture to culture. Yeah, it, it reminded me when I was, um, a few years ago, traveling to Malaysia and Thailand and some other countries, um, I learned that it was taboo to, like, point with my pointer finger, so I had to learn how to point with my whole hand. Um, and then, for a while, that just became my adjusted behavior. Um, mm -hmm. And, and yeah, there's, there's a lot of gift giving taboos. Um, there's religion can be often a big taboo. Um, the, what was the example with, um, in, in some places where there's fasting going on because of religious region, reasons, um, eating in public can be taboo. Um, and, and ultimately, like as we're more and more able to connect to each other in all sorts of different ways, um, and as also there's a loneliness epidemic in America that's only like worse than ever, I, I really invite people to, when they're with somebody that they feel safe and comfortable with, um, maybe explore being a little vulnerable. Right, yeah. Yeah, so, and the, the whole reason I picked this particular topic of uh, uh, what is a taboo even is because Sophia was like, uh, you told me, Hey, uh, what do you want to? What would you want to talk about if you were on the show? And I, my response was, well, I mean, how do you define taboo? Like, what is <laughs> what topics can I pick in the first place? And um, I mean, I, I think w what I've learned is that you have a lot of topics to go over. You're like, you're not going to run out anytime soon. Yeah, I could do um, this for the rest of my life and still miss hundreds of topics. I best. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah. Good problem to have for sure. Yeah, yeah. So if you listening out there on the other side of the screen um, have any ideas of topics, uh, I would love for you to shoot them my way. Um, I've got a link in my bio where you can fill out a Google form if you want to be anonymous. Um, you can also just DM me or get in touch with me however you want to do that. Um, all right. So uh, I hope you're on for another episode sometime, Reed. Thank you for having this discussion with me and exploring these topics. Yeah, thank um, you for having any, me. Any last words? Um, no, none that I can think of. I think I've gotten it all out. All right, all right. Well, uh, happy Tuesday, friends. Goodbye, goodbye. All right. Ending. Need